Welcome to our lecture online. Let's suppose that we have an object with a certain volume inside the liquid. Of course, that object will experience a buoyancy force. Now, what happens when the temperature changes? Well, first of all, when the temperature changes, let's say the temperature increases, then the volume of the object will increase. And of course, if the volume of the object increases, it will displace more fluid, and therefore the buoyancy force will go up. But at the same time, when the temperature increases, the temperature of the liquid will also increase, and so therefore, the density of the liquid will decrease as the liquid expands, which causes it to be less of a buoyancy force. So the question now is, if we have an object that has a linear coefficient of expansion alpha, and it's inside a liquid that has a volume coefficient of expansion beta, we need to show that the differential of the buoyancy force, the change in the buoyancy force, is going to be equal to the initial volume times the initial density, of course that's the initial volume of the object, the initial density of the liquid, times g, times 3 alpha minus beta times the differential in the, in the temperature. All right, so how do we do that? Well, first we want to start with the concept that we've shown in the previous video, that the change in the density is equal to the initial density times the volume coefficient of expansion times the change in the temperature but of course a negative sign there because as the temperature goes up the density goes down and we know that the buoyancy force is equal to the density times the volume times g where the density is the density of the liquid the volume is the volume of the object g of course is the acceleration due to gravity so how do we prove that equation well, first of all, let's start with the buoyancy force, and now let's take the derivative of that buoyancy force with respect to the temperature. So I'll start with the buoyancy force is equal to the initial density times initial volume times g. Now the change in the, the buoyancy force with respect to the temperature, that's going to be equal to so g is a constant, so we can take that out. And now we have two variables here, so we're going to multiply that times d, the first, times the derivative of the second, with respect to the temperature, plus the second, times the derivative of the first. Whoop, I need the derivative symbol. Forgot my symbol. There we go. The density with respect to the temperature because here we're using the product rule. All right, now notice we have a dt on all terms in the equation, so we can go ahead and multiply both sides by dt, and then we realize that we have a definition for the change in the density, which can be replaced by that, and, hmm, let's see here, then we have a change in the volume. Now, the change in the volume, how, how would we write that? Well, we know that uh, the change in the volume is going to be equal to the, well, in case of the, uh, I guess that would be, since we're dealing with the volume of the object, that would be the change in the volume of the object, so that would be 3 times alpha times the original volume times the change in the temperature. So dV can be written like this. Okay, so we have the differential of the buoyancy force is equal to g times the original density times dv and hmm, let me put on the same height because we've gotten rid of the dt's so we write it this first so dv plus v initial times the density like this and now let's replace what dv is equal to of course that would be the original volume like this so the d the differential of the buoyancy force is equal to g times the original density times dv, which can be written as 3 alpha times v initial times dt plus v initial times the difference in the density that would be minus the density times beta times dt. Like this, and I need to close my bracket. Now let's collect common terms. We have the density term, we have the volume term, and we have the dt term. So then we can say that the differential of the buoyancy force, the change in the buoyancy force, is going to be equal to g times density times volume multiplied times, here we have a 3 alpha, there we have a minus beta, 
and I guess I need a bracket, this bracket, times the change in the temperature, and I believe that is the equation we're trying to prove. And so now you can see that the change in the buoyancy force as the temperature goes up, we have the original G, rho, and V. In other words, the original density of the liquid, the original volume of the object times G, multiplied times 3 alpha, now of course that is the linear coefficient of expansion for the object times 3 for the volume, minus the volume coefficient of expansion for the liquid times the change in the temperature. And that is how that's done.